It all began with an old bed sheet that I hadn't used in a while, and by it I mean my self-reinvention rather than just a sewing project alone, although sewing itself is a means of reinventing myself. I was going to throw this fabric out as I was cleaning the house, but I got this sense of sudden inspiration. I looked back to the days when I was a child when starting new passions was as easy as snapping your fingers or just getting up and doing it. Nowadays there's restrictions, responsibilities and social norms, or so it seems. In that given moment I had realised that for the past 10 years of my life, these perceived restrictions, responsibilities and social norms have been obstructing my perceptions of beauty and importance. Perhaps I should express this thought in a more passive voice to assign the responsibility for not fighting for my passions back to me because at the end of the day it was I who gave into the restrictions, responsibilities and social expectations. It was I who chose to do what others expected of me. And it was I who chose to be a frightened spectator to my own life. As silly as this may sound, this old bedsheet had given me hope. Hope for something new, something exhilarating. Because life too can be transformed from an old rag into a beautiful Italian romance inspired girl. So I took it upon myself, like someone who's looking for meaning in life, and I guess I was, to start my self reinvention journey. And what's funny is that all of this began with one old bed sheet. As a kid, I remember the chore of stitching up holes in my socks because throwing them out was only acceptable when they were four sizes too small. It was a chore, but I found solace in it. I can also remember enjoying sewing clothes for my Barbie dolls. In fact, from a very young age, I had a desire to create and passion for all kinds of art. I've always had a yearning to create beautiful things, but I never knew exactly what to create. And I guess that's the beauty of wanting to create and being an artist is that you want to create so much that you're so overwhelmed with everything you, you don't know what to start with and this was my problem I didn't know where to start I wanted to be an artist and a writer and a singer and a songwriter I wanted to be all of these things at the same time and at the same time I felt like I had no right to do all these things at the same time because only qualified people can do these things. I felt like I didn't know enough. I felt lost because I thought that I could only do one thing in life and that would be it. And I wish I had had someone who would have told me, you don't have to be one thing. You don't have to do one thing in life. This life is much more than that. This, you can do anything you want. And as cliched as this may sound, yes, you can do anything that you want in life and it's up to you to choose which path you end up following or which two paths you end up following because, as I've learned, you can follow more than one path in life and that's okay. And so, this thought of this fright, this sort of inability to, to choose what I wanted to do, what one thing I wanted to focus on, discouraged me. It made me think that I wasn't good enough. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so my ultimate decision was to abandon my passion and art and to focus on getting a good corporate job because I felt like, yeah, this is what everyone is doing now and I should do that because that is going to make me happy, that's going to give me some sort of freedom, that's going to give me money, and money will make me happy. And no, money will not make me happy, and no, a corporate job will not make me happy. And so, now I know that, but back then, this idea of having a glamorous corporate job was something that I thought was the only thing I could do because everything else was out of reach. Because I created this barrier, I 
I told myself that I'm not good enough, that I can't do something because there's people who do these things already and they do them so much better and I can't do that because I'm not as good as them. And whether this was a good decision or not, that I didn't follow my passion and I decided to abandon art and my passions, I'm not sure. I don't like to dwell on these things. I don't like to think about this too much. But what I do know is that I am thankful that I have come to this realization that it's okay to to not know what you want to do and it's okay to to do more than one thing in life it's okay to want to create more than just one thing you know it's not up to anyone else but you to decide what you want to create what you might want to make of your life and i wish i'd had someone to tell me this but at the same time i'm happy that this has happened now because i have learned a lesson and i can now Tell others, listen, this has happened to me and you can do it better, you can do it this way. And what's more beautiful about this is that by, by going through all of this, by experiencing all the things that I've never actually wanted to do, uh, things like going through university which was enjoyable but in a sense it's not what I really wanted to do. Uh, it's not what I wanted to study. And I feel like I've learned so much. I am a much stronger person. And now I know for sure what I want to do. And I know that I can create whatever I want. And I can, I know my way in life. Maybe not the entire path. I don't know everything, but I have learned something and I'm going to, to use it to help others. It's rather funny that all this inspiration and thoughts have been evoked by an old bedsheet, but I'm so happy that I have finally come to the realization that I don't have to follow the regular path. I get to choose what I want to do, and that thing is creating. I wish I knew all this when I was a kid. And so I thought sharing this with others would help those who like me I felt lost in a world which they don't seem to fit in. So here are a couple of reflections and advice I would have given to my 10 year old self. Number one, explore. Explore everything from art to cooking to singing to playing instruments to sports. Do things that you wouldn't think you'd like because even if you end up not liking it in the end, you will have learned something. Don't be afraid of exploration. Don't be afraid of what others might think of you. At the end of the day, this is your life and you should live it the way you want to. And no one's opinion should stop you from trying something new or doing what you love. Oftentimes I think I've gone past this stage of caring about other people's opinions and what others might think of me. But even when I was editing this video, there was this part of me that said, don't upload it. People will think you're weird, don't even bother editing it because people won't like your work. And thank goodness each time I had such a thought I immediately diverted my focus back to my passion for creating stories and inspiring. You really should not care about what others might think of you. I also think that the more you grow to love what you do, the easier that will become. Although that's not to say that you will never again care about others' opinions. That's hard and in my opinion not healthy either. It's the idea of comparison and being able to see good days as good only because of bad days. Without that comparison, well, everything would just simply exist. Number two, learn to acknowledge criticism but don't always assume others know better. This one I still struggle with. Whenever someone criticizes my work, I get this feeling that no one will like my work and that I should change the way that I edit or film my videos or whatever it is that I'm doing. But that is simply not the case and artists like ice cream, some people like strawberry, others like vanilla, but I like chocolate. That's not to say don't listen to criticism ever. Yes, 
do listen to others with respect, take it on board and consider it, think about it and perhaps there is something to it, perhaps you could improve your editing or change this thing or you know this other thing but remember you don't have to apply it to your work you don't always have to change everything to just satisfy someone else because you want to make yourself happy you want to be happy with what you do and yes you do want to make i want to make others you know happy when they watch my work but that's not to say that they will find every bit of my work inspiring and amazing because that's not the case. Like I said, people have different tastes. Number three, stop feeling unqualified. I've always had this feeling that I'm not good or qualified enough to do something. And this, this fear, this feeling of being unqualified or not good enough to do something has stopped me from trying new things and pursuing my passion and pursuing art. And it has also meant that whenever I create something I always feel like it's not good enough. I compare myself to other filmmakers with 10 plus years of experience and I feel crap about my own work. There was this quote from Jordan Peterson who said, don't compare yourself to someone who is a hundred steps ahead of you. And this is so true, this resonates with me so much because I always end up comparing myself to, to other people who have 10 plus years of experience and and I I just criticise myself. I go back and rewatch my work and even with this film I went back and I rewatched my film and I was like, God damn it, it's like it's not good enough. Like no one is gonna enjoy this. But at the end of the day, I am enjoying this process. I, I am still learning and also I know that I will always be my own worst critic, but I've grown to be okay with that. Although I want my work to be perfect, I know that it'll never be perfect because there is always so much more that I can learn and improve. And to be quite frank with you, if I, you know, if I wanted to make this film perfect, I would have never uploaded it. If I waited for that moment until this video was perfect. This video would never be uploaded to YouTube. Number four, and this is the last piece of advice that I have for you, or rather to my 10 year old self, um, and that is do doubt yourself sometimes, or you know, if you want to put it in a nicer way. Um, question the, the importance of things. I knew I always wanted to create more than fitness videos. You know, I enjoyed creating fitness videos while I was doing it, but I wanted to create something deeper and something more meaningful. I am a dreamer at heart and art is my air. I feel so at peace when I create, when I'm sewing, when I'm editing. And I can't simply do something for the sake of doing it, at least not anymore. I need my air to stay alive and right now I'm slowly coming back to life. And, you know, I'm, I'm right here because I doubted myself while I was doing fitness videos and I questioned, I questioned if that was what I wanted to do. I always had this sense of um feeling unfulfilled like i wasn't doing something that was really resonating with me something that i truly cared about and all this questioning and doubt has led me to to change my path and start creating content that i care about and that gives me joy so always ask yourself if this is truly what you want to do because if you don't, you, you, you'll be watching your life from afar like I was. So remember, it's never too late to start a new passion. It doesn't have to be a huge epiphany that leads you to your passion. It could simply be an old bedsheet. Like in my case, I, I had no idea that this would happen. I had no idea that I would find solace in, in sewing and in, in creating. 
something like this and trying things out makes you realise that this is what you've been missing in your life. This is the missing piece. But also remember, passions do require work. As you will see soon, my, my dress is nowhere near perfect, but I'm learning and that's okay. It, you know, it's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be joyful and it's supposed to make you happy.